Good morning, y'all. So if you're like me, you can't grow cranberries. So this is the time of year to watch those cells and get them as cheap as possible. Throw them in your freezer until you have something to do with them. Well, then what? I'm going to give you a few things to do with those cranberries so you can use your money wisely and still have those lovely cranberry flavors. Hi y'all, I'm Jamie and this is Dig It Homesteading. Welcome to my kitchen. And today I have some cranberries that I found on sale. So we're going to can them up in a few different ways. I'm excited to share these with you. These aren't recipes I've done before, but they sound delicious. So let me know if you have made these before and how you like them. I'm going to be working out of this book and I'll show it to you. The Ball Complete Book of Home Pres Preserving. There's a lot of great stuff in here. I have three that we're going to use from this book today, plus another that's not in here, but I will link that information down below. And I can also link where I got this if you're interested in it. This book is great. I have loved it. So to start, I'm going to open up all these cranberries and give them a rinse and pick through them. Make sure there's none, no icky ones in there and that we're using the best quality per possible. I will show you that one bag is right about four cups. Like these. They're not the best looking so the chickens can have those. show you. You don't have to have actual all the canning equipment to do these recipes. This is just a giant stock pot. I have a dish towel in at the bottom and I have all my clean jars sitting in this warm water. That way they are ready when we are. Alright, here they are. I'm letting them just sit in the water that I used to rinse them and defrost them a little bit. And just pick through and sort through anything that shouldn't be in there. But aren't they just gorgeous? Just lovely. Lovely, lovely color. So anyway, we're going to get started while these defrost a little bit. I don't think they have to be defrosted. I think you could do these recipes straight from the freezer. But it might take you a little bit longer if they're not defrosted. Okay, so to start, we're going to make a cranberry conserve, and it is on page 80. And it makes about four 8 ounce jars. And to start, we're going to need an orange. No, uh, not peeled. Let's do this. Okay, to prepare our orange, we need it to be seeded and finely chopped. I'm just going to take a little bit of top off and cut it in half and the notes do say something about a food processor making quick work and chopping the orange but then how do you make sure the seeds are out that's my question so I'm gonna just go through and cut them in slices and I don't even know if this is an orange with seeds but we're gonna make sure it's not and I'm just gonna fill like that for any seeds and I don't fill any oh that might be no it's not so I might have lucked out and gotten a seedless orange which is also an option and then you can just throw this through your food processor and make extra quick jo um, job of all of this. So I'm going to just make this super teeny tiny, probably an eighth of an inch pieces. Just super teeny tiny. It 
a stainless steel saucepan, we want to bring two cups of water and our orange to boil. And we're going to boil that about five minutes until the peel is nice and tender. And I'm going to try to get all that juice in there too. Okay, so while that's going, we're going to get our other ingredients rest, um, ready for us which is four cups of cranberries. And then we're gonna need half a cup of raisins. I got these for another recipe, so we'll just use them. We don't really eat a whole lot of raisins around here. And our um, orange peel and water is up to boil now, so I need to kind of watch my time. used to eat raisins a lot. I don't know what happened. Maybe the kids stopped eating them and I stopped buying them. That's probably more than likely what it is. All right, about half a cup. Now we need half a cup of chopped nuts. I still have some chopped walnuts in my freezer that I'm using up. So we're going to use those. And you'll also need three cups of sugar. And I've got my jar out here ready. And I just need to get a measuring scoop and I think that's it. This recipe is going to make my house smell delicious. So they have been boiling about four minutes. So not quite soft yet. We'll give them a little bit longer. And I am keeping this partly covered when I'm not stirring it. Okay, our peels are soft. So next we're going to add our cranberries, our raisins, and our sugar, which will be three cups. This is a half a cup, so I need to do six. Okay, so now we want to get all of this stirred up and we're going to return it to boil. And we're going to keep stirring it frequently until it thickens. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, we got a jumper. you see that? I don't even know where it went. I'm going to have to find that one for the chickens too. Okay, y'all, this is looking just beautiful. It is starting to thicken a little bit, but it still needs some more time. Can you see? Hopefully you can see. It's a little s steamy going on there. Let's taste. And we can also see how much of a gel. There's a slight gel. Mmm. That tastes divine. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and we aren't using any pectin in this recipe. So to test if it gels, put some on a plate and then we'll pop this in the freezer for just a few minutes and we'll see if it's set. So it's only been in there for about a minute, but you see it's not quite set. And that's a good stage right now to add our nuts. And this is really starting to thicken up now. So we're going to cook this for about five more minutes. And then we'll test for set again. And at this stage, you do want to stir consistently. Don't walk away. Also, if you don't like nuts or you know people with a nut allergy, just leave the nuts out. I am sure this would be just fine without it. Okay, so this is extra, extra thick now, so we're going to do a little taste, I'm mean, not a taste, do a little test on our plate again. Alright, that is not going anywhere. I've got the pla plate all the way vertical, and look, it's got that lovely skin. 
Mmm, definitely. Definitely ready. Okay, I'm going to turn this off the heat and give it one more stir. And let's grab our jars and get to filling. This is going to be beautiful. Alright, so I've got our jars and they are warm. i probably like them to be a little bit warmer. But it'll have to do right now. My sink is backing up. And I'm going to have to get hubby to fix that. So we're going to use our funnel and get these filled up. And we need a fourth of an inch head space. Which is going to be almost to the very tippy top. So I'm going to go through and just get them all filled. And then we'll see what we're left with and measure our head space. Okay, that is right about a fourth of an inch. I got some on the edge. This one needs a little bit more. I'm just tamping it down. That helps remove our air bubbles as well and get just as much as we can in the jars with the proper headspace. That one might have a little too much. But, I'm just gonna have to use this little plastic container and hope it all fits, because I don't want to go through the dishwasher right now. Oh yeah, that'll be perfect. So tell me how you use your conserves. What do you like to use them for? Because I am very new to conserves. But this is so easy to make. I know I'm going to be making more. And if you have a favorite recipe you think I should try out, please let me know that as well. Because that is so much fun. Okay, got us a little dish of extras. We'll let that cool and stick that in the fridge as well. I'm just going to go through and debubble. Although I don't think there's going to be any bubbles. We tampen them all down and this is a pretty thick um pretty thick sauce like a jelly. And then this side's the side we use for our headspace. This one's probably a little full. So is that one. So is that one. And I'm going to just spread them out and then check my headspace again. Because they're kind of humped over in the middle. Okay, that looks better. This is almost enough for a fifth one. So we shall see, we might have five. Okay, what y'all think? Is that enough for a fifth one? Let's see. Not quite enough for a fifth one, that's unfortunate. So this one will cool down and just be put in the fridge. And I don't think anybody's gonna complain about that. Wow, this brand new jar had two lids on it. Actually, I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to leave that over here so I know. Okay, I'm going to wipe down the, lid, the rings right down the rims and put my rings on fingertip tight. And then these are going to wait for our next batch. Alright, so those are going to sit there and wait for the next item we're going to make and we're going to water bath everything together. We're actually going to do two more um, projects out of that book and I'm just going to reuse this pot because they're basically all the same ingredients, it's just a different product. Okay, this is going to be whole berry cranberry sauce and it's on page 178. 
And to start, we need to put in four cups of water and four cups of sugar. Again, I'm using a half a cup, so I need eight. Eight, and then we'll do a bit because it's unlevel coming out of that jar. Now we're just going to bring all of this to a boil as well and get all that sugar dissolved into our water and make sure there's no cranberry leaves floating around in it. And while this is warming, I'm just going around getting the rest of this off the edges so none of it burns. But there's still good flavor and there's that natural pectin where it gelled in it so no harm in adding that and if it has a little bit of an orange flavor as well that's perfectly okay this recipe actually has an optional um, grated orange zest which I'm not going to do so this will give just a tiny hint of that orange zest in there okay we've got this up to a boil and we want to keep it at a hard boil stirring just a little here and there for about five minutes Okay, now it's time to add eight cups of our cranberries very carefully because sugar water sticks and burns skin very easily. Now we're going to bring this back up to a boil and stir and let it reduce for about 15 minutes. Alright, it's brought up to a boil and I'm just going to keep an eye on it and keep stirring it at random and all the berries should burst so don't be like me once you get it up to a boil leave your lid off because I put my lid what is that put my lid back on and went to go grab something real quick like literally two seconds and I had some boil over look like a stem or something I'll find it and it boiled over now it smells like toasted marshmallows in here and if you can't tell by my bird it set off my smoke alarm as well so now she's gonna be a smoke alarm so lid off at this point so even though this is a whole berry cranberry I am going through as well and just giving them a smush for one, my people, I don't know if they've ever had home canned cranberry sauce, let alone with the whole berry. So I'm going to make it a like in between. So some will be whole, some will be smushed. And then if I figure out that they don't like it with the whole cranberries, I would take an immersion blender and just blitz it up probably right about this stage before it sh starts sheeting a metal spoon or you can use that plate method I showed you in the last recipe to see if it starts to gel and this should be just a lovely lovely sauce look at oh it's beautiful so let's test it and see if it's coating a metal spoon definitely coating And once it actually sheets from the metal spoon, then we'll be done. Alright, I did the gel test on the plate, and it is definitely setting. So if you were going to add the orange zest, you would do it now at the very end. I'm going to grab our jars, and we're going to get this jarred up. So this recipe would make eight of the smaller size, the eight ounce jars, or four pints. I'm going to go ahead and use four pints. That way we can use one for Thanksgiving, one for Christmas this year, and the same for next year. And I have taken this, oh I haven't, I thought I had pulled it off the heat, but I just turned it all the way up. We're going to ladle this. 
into our jars. If you don't like the little seeds, I don't know if you could strain this, but I think it will add a lovely texture. And we're also going to do this to a 1 4th inch headspace. That's right about. And it is already jillion. Really good. And I'm trying to make sure that I get some whole cranberries and some squished cranberries in each jar. It's still partially sitting on that hot burner. That's why it's sizzling and bubbling away. So I'll try to take it from that area first. But this is lovely. This looks way better than any of that canned stuff. I've never liked the canned stuff from the store. Well, this does not look like we are going to get four pints. That's what I have left. So I will put this in a little jar and we can have that for Thanksgiving as well and I'll just stick it in the fridge because I doubt that's going to fill up even one of the smaller ones. Yeah, definitely not. And it does say makes about eight, eight, eight ounce jars or four pints. So that is three and a half. So that, well, no, that's three and a quarter. So that is about, about. But anyway, I will label this and stick it in the fridge. And this only has one actual cranberry in it. So if somebody is offended that there's whole cranberries in there, then this will be the sauce for them. I'm going to set this to a side, label it, stick it in the fridge with our conserve. I'm going to wipe my rims put on some new rings and we got one more that's going to go in the batch with these to be processed. I did want to show you I did add a little bit more to that one. This one looks okay. I might add just a tiny bit more to that one just to get closer to that quarter inch headspace. But this is why I like watching other people do recipes out of books. That way if I was completely dependent on having four of these I would know I need to double it. But since it's a recipe I've never tried before, I'm just going by the recipe to see what happens and then I can double it. And I'm also going to make notes on my book in my recipe about how many I actually got. That way I'll know for the future. And if you're wondering how these in the back already have labels, they haven't been processed. I'm just trying something. I've seen where people have said you can use Sharpie and label in advance. So I'm gonna test that out and see if my, that's hot, if my marking stays on after I process. Okay, the next one is in the same book, on the same page, 178, and it is cranberry rum sauce. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. The book recommends on like toast, English muffins, or even pork, those kind of things. So we'll have to taste it and see what we can do with it. But it sounds very interesting and extra fancy. So if you know anybody who likes that, this might be the recipe for you. And I am going to reuse all of this same equipment again. Because uh, what's the point in uh, washing everything? Work smarter, not harder. So this one's going to start a little bit differently. We need to make a spice bag with cinnamon, cinnamon sticks. Calls for three broken in half, and I have two and a bit that need to be used up. But then it also calls for whole allspice and whole cloves. I don't have that. I have ground of both that I want to use up instead of buying more spices that I don't use that often and I will show you how I'm going to substitute it and we will taste and find out if it was good enough because those two spices can be very overpowering and we don't want that we just want like a hint of them in there so if you have those whole spices you'd want to put them in here as well 
So back to the stove. We need to add one and a half cup of water. And we're going to get this ladle out of here because we don't need it right now. And now we need two cups of uh, granulated white sugar. And then just another little bit because it doesn't fill up on this side when I'm scooping it. And uh, tell me you're from the south without telling me you're from the south because I've had to get some cracker crumbs out of my sugar today. Now is where we also add our spice bag. And I'm going to go ahead and add our little seasonings. Okay, the allspice calls for about eight whole pieces. I'm just going to use a little bit less than a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more than that. And throw it in there. And then six whole cloves. Just probably a, just a little bit less. We want this to be a warm spiced sauce, but we don't want to knock our socks off with this. Now we're going to turn this up and bring it to a boil over high heat and stir it consistently until your sugar dissolves. This has given me some Christmas vibes for sure. What would you use that with? Like a spiced rum cranberry sauce? Let me know what ideas you have. And I'm going to do the same thing in here and just rinse down my sides because I don't want anything to burn up here. Okay, so that has come up to a boil. We're going to add eight cups of cranberries carefully as well. We need two large apples. Peeled and peeled, cored and chopped. So I'm gonna take care of that while these come back up to heat. You should technically have this done in advance, but that's okay. We'll get it all done. And these are not large apples. I bought a bag of apples to do this project, so I could use like three or four if I needed to. And I'm telling you, my kids just about ate them all. These are the only two left. So I'm going to be grateful for what I was left with. But I also did not tell them. There's a fuzz. Also did not tell them that I was going to be using it. So no fault of their own. Okay, peeled and cored. And I'm going to chop these pretty small. And I'm not going to worry about that little bit of peel. Let's see, peeled, cored, and chopped. We are going to do a little bit of a small chop. And just throw those in the pot. With our cranberries that are coming up to a boil. This already looks and smells amazing. I kind of have a feeling this might be one of those things I need to double or triple and just have a couple of years worth or a couple of years worth and gifts. But I might be giving these out as part of a gift this year all right it's come up to a boil so we want to gently boil this and stir it for about five minutes until all the berries start to burst while we wait for that I think we should try the cranberry sauce remember I don't like store-bought canned cranberry sauce why are my cabinets always open always never fails so that's what it looks like. Nice and gelled. Wow! Y'all, that has way more flavor 
Then the store bought. Oh yeah. That's definitely delicious. I hope everybody else enjoys it too. I can't believe how much flavor that has in it. It's I never even thought about it. I guess it's cranberry jelly, but it's cranberry preserves if you leave it whole cranberry sauce. So why is it called sauce? Let me know if you know because I don't understand because the cans at the store are usually jellied cranberry, which to me would be cranberry jelly. And then this is whole cranberry sauce, but it doesn't run like a sauce. Anyway, back to cooking. Okay, y'all, this is right at five minutes and it is looking absolutely delicious already so now I'm going to find my little spice bag and scoot it out of the way because now you need a potato masher okay we take our potato masher and we're gonna go through and mash everybody up you could also make this into a saucy sauce and use your immersion blender but mine has uh, given up recently and I'm trying to hold out until I can hit some Cyber Monday sales or something like that. Maybe get one for Christmas. I don't know yet. But we're going to smush all this up as best as we can. And the recipe does recommend a potato masher. So this is what the recipe asks for. Just so you know. I don't know if it caught. We added rum. You could use dark or light. And it was three-fourths of a cup. And I'm going to just continue mashing up as I stir. And we're going to keep this simmering. Probably could be a little bit higher. Like a medium-high heat for about five minutes and I'm just mashing up any more big pieces that I see but don't worry that alcohol will cook off that's what the five minutes is for is to cook off our alcohol all right that looks really good so at this point we want to try to carefully remove our sauce bag and I'm gonna turn this off the heat because this is a sauce we're not waiting for it to come to a jelly And then we're going to discard this bag. And I've got some jars here. My water's starting to cool off, so I just put them by the pot to try to warm them up just a little bit. It's not really cold in here at all, so room temperature at the moment. And this recipe says it makes six, well, about six eight ounce jars, which are these little jars again. And we're going to do the same process of filling them up to a fourth of an inch headspace. And then I will wipe my rims, add new rings. And this will be the last recipe we do on the stove. So we're going to get these processing. Hopefully y'all can see just how beautiful this is. I'm trying to change my lighting up for y'all. And you might have heard some pinging happen for these different ones. But they are not sealed for the shelf. Even if they sat here and seal. You do want to process them to be shelf stable. But these are just absolutely gorgeous. And this did make exactly six... with a bit for the fridge 
extra. So that will be great so my family and I can taste it and know what we have to give out as gifts. I don't think I'd ever make something and not know what it tastes like and give it out. Even that's a little risky for me. But I will taste this. I'm letting it cool over there for a little bit while I'm doing this. And I'm going to taste this cranberry rum sauce. Cranberry rum sauce. It is still steaming. Holy moly. That seasoning, no the spices, spices are spot on. This is like a warm cranberry Christmas hug. Wow. I like that a lot. Okay, do this one for sure. Y'all, what else can we use this for? Let me know. I'm going to package up the rest of this and get it stuck in the fridge as well. I think my family is going to love this. Uh, croissants. It'd be good on croissants. Crumpets. English muffins. Anything like that. With a blob of real butter. Oh my goodness. But it's like fancy cranberry sauce. This is the, if you're having important company over and you want to impress them instead of giving them jelly with whatever you're doing, this is the one. Okay, so I had an idea for the rum sauce as I was packaging it up. We made cranberry meatballs together and they're going to be a Thanksgiving appetizer. This could be spiced cranberry instead of the jelly or the store-bought jelly store-bought can jelly whatever it is you could use this stuff in place of that in the meatballs and make Christmas cranberry meatballs uh, y'all we're gonna festive up everything this year so if you haven't seen that recipe i have a recipe for the cranberry meatballs and i will link that video below okay i've got my giant stock pot on my glass top stove which if you don't know is broken that back burner is completely broke and i have slowly had a crack creeping creeping across so we are definitely in the market for a stove and i think i want to go to gas um i do have the water heating up and I'm going to go ahead and get all of these guys set in here. And I think I'm going to do the ones we just did last because this water seems like it has really cooled off. You don't want to have a big temperature difference in your water versus the temperature of the jars because that's when cracking starts I'm gonna put the lid on here and let this water warm up a little bit and then I'm gonna add the rest of these in all right that water has warmed up so we are going to try much warmer now I'm not worried about cracking jars okay look in here See, I have two more jars that I need to fit in here, but there's no space. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Since this pot is so deep, I could stack it two or three high, but it's not a canning thing, a canning pot, so it doesn't come with anything. But I have this from my roaster. So basically, we will just stick that on top of those and then add these in. Oh, I had three more jars so this will be perfect 
and we have just about an inch of water over our jars so we'll bring this up to a boil and it actually is perfect for canning because it has a little steamer hole so once the steam starts coming out of here then I will start my timer and all of these are going to process for 15 and then you want to let it sit for five and then you can remove your jars and I'll show you all what they look like when they're done and I definitely can't wait to get to this next one it's something very common very easy but especially if you can find organic cranberries on sale this time of year it will be beneficial to you especially if that's the kind of um, fruit you're looking for these aren't organic these are just regular store-bought cranberries I don't even think I've seen organic cranberries in my area but if you have them get them and uh, we're gonna make some juice next but we're going to do it a little bit different for our dietary needs for throughout the year okay so most of the time recipes like this will call for sugar but most of the year we don't eat a lot of sugar so I'm gonna substitute some allulose for this and I have never used allulose in it I have used Splenda no Stevia instead and you want about uh, one and a half cups to two cups fresh cranberries in here I have about eight cups left over so we're just going to divide these between the four and I see a squishy one already that bowl is so big I've been cleaning them and sorting them as I go but this way if you're doing a big canning day and you know you might have some extra cranberries which this is about two bags worth of cranberries extra you can make yourself some homemade cranberry juice to have on the shelf for when necessary some people just love drinking cranberry juice all the time some people use it whenever they're having bladder problems either way it's so easy to do this and it is so pretty and these also get water bath canned I believe this one is 25 minutes since they are quartz that's why we're not doing it with the other guys our littles need 15 minutes yes you want to water bath can these for 25 minutes and then you want to let them sit for a few weeks so if you're somebody that drinks a lot of cranberry juice, maybe do a batch and then wait a couple weeks and then do another batch. Say you find them on sale, throw them all in your freezer, defrost them, throw them in your jars, make your batches. That way you have just endless cranberry juice sitting there waiting for you on the shelf. And these were definitely a good batch. I did not find very many mushy ones at all this time. If I know I'm going to be a few days before I can, I definitely stick them in the freezer. Because sometimes you never know. If there's a couple going off, then these, all the lovely ones, can go off. All right, the specific recipe I'm following, I will link it below. It calls for half a cup of allulose. We're going to use that in a bit because we do like it a little bit sweeter. And this is the only recipe I'm showing you that is not necessarily an approved method since I am using the allulose. It hasn't been tested is why it's not approved but if you use sugar it is an approved recipe and I'm fighting a little bitty scoop in there and these front two is easy enough to put my sweetener in but I went and got a funnel to put the sweetener in for these back ones because they are regular mouth jars and I will pour that sweetener everywhere if I don't use a funnel 
And we have been using this allulose in different things. I have not canned with it yet. Um, I do know quite a few ladies who are canning with allulose with no problem. And I trust them. So that's up to you if you're comfortable with that. All right, now I have some water boiling on the stove and we're gonna add that. Okay, so now we are just going to fill these jars with really hot water, leaving a half inch head space. kettle's perfect. Did you notice? I got a brand new kettle. My lovely honey found this for me and bought it. Isn't that sweet? It's one of my favorite colors. And ooh, our big stock pot is just about ready to go. So we're just going to wipe the rings, add our lids, and then we'll process these the same exact way that we did the other ones in the water bath canner with water above them but we're going to process these for 25 minutes and I'll show you what everybody looks like coming out of the pot just absolutely beautiful these have been sitting here while the others were processing you see some of the berry juice is already starting to leach out into our water even before we process it so it makes that cool ombre effect it's very pretty just going to move these out of the way for now. All of our lovely little jars of cranberry products are done processing. So we're going to pull those out. And we are going to leave them here undisturbed until tomorrow. But look how lovely. I'm excited for these. I need to get my little separator do out. And we can get the whole cranberry sauce out. Again, just pretty as can be. I don't know that I will ever go back to regular store-bought canned cranberry sauce. Oh, we already have some popping. That's awesome. And this is our cranberry orange conserve. You can see all the bits and pieces in there. And you can see my label stayed on. So yay! When I'm doing a whole batch of things that may look similar, I didn't want to get any of them mixed up. So that works out perfectly for me to have them pre-labeled so nobody goes in the wrong pile. All right, now we're just gonna get our cranberry juice in here and get our water above the jars and then we are going to process those for 25 minutes all right our cranberry juice has finished processing and these sit while i went and got sister off the bus and they are looking absolutely beautiful And remember to let these sit in a cool, dark place. Remember to label them and date them. But let them sit for at least two weeks. If you can go longer, then that's even better. So, hubby's home and sinks are getting fixed. 
Yes. I won't do it though. Yeah, okay. But anyway, so excited to have my sinks fixed. It is such an inconvenience to not have running water and a sink in your kitchen, especially when you're trying to can. But anyway, we got everybody out, out of the pot. They're all gonna sit here until at least tomorrow. Then I'll make sure I label the ones that I haven't and date them. And then they can go in the pantry and sit there until we are ready for them. And they are beautiful, y'all. I'm so excited. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. This has been a fun project. Get out there and watch for your cranberry sales and get some on your shelves. One last thing, you can put any extra cranberries you have or even the cranberries from your juice in your dehydrator and turn them into craisins, y'all. Make your own craisins, so easy. That one's a little crunchy. I think I need to reduce my heat. Some are soft. That one's soft. That one's ready. Anyway, what a fun way. And they still taste like cranberry even after they made juice. So a twofer project. I love those. If you enjoyed any part of this video, please hit a like. It lets me and the algorithm know that you're enjoying what you see. And thanks for spending the time that you spend with me. I do not take any of that for granted. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And until the next video, love you. Bye-bye.